Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, I wanted to discuss why your predictability in game is losing you matches. So when it comes to playing Rainbow Six, how many times have you got onto a new map and you pretty much know exactly where the defenders are going to be, so you adjust your lineup accordingly? Now, obviously, this doesn't really work for casual. I am well aware of that, but certainly for ranked players and certainly up from like Platinum 3 up towards Diamond, you definitely get this sort of meta that has been crafted over the past few seasons and it's gotten a little stale. If I'm playing on the map Consular and I'm on attack, I can pretty much guarantee with 90% certainty that the defenders are going to be on the top floor first. That is the strongest site. It's the meta, the way it is settled. With the current ops that are in the game, it makes the most sense for them to do that. It's the easiest to hold. If I was playing a match on Chalet, it would make most sense for them to probably go to the kitchen, trophy room. On Bank, it's probably going to be down in the basement. But it's because of this very fact that I already know roughly where they're going to go that the attacking team can change their lineup. You can say, you know what? We don't need these three ops. We do need these three ops. You know, Consulate is a perfect example. And in fact, I've got a clip that I'm going to show you in just a minute in which if they're going upstairs, you're going to want to take an IQ if Valk is still on the board because you can guarantee that there's going to be Valk cams hidden all sorts of places outside. They're going to be able to watch you repelling on the windows. And as soon as you do, they're going to jump out and try and get you. So an IQ is pretty much a requirement. Nomad is going to be a very, very good shout because you know those jump outs and those run outs are going to happen. So a Nomad is a pretty strong bet. So here's where it comes into it. Your predictability and the enemy team knowing exactly where you're going to be and where you're going to go and roughly who you're going to take is half the battle. If you watch my live streams, you will know that very often I'm a big advocate of going to probably one of the weaker sites on defense first. And my logic behind this all stems down to this. You have the potential of catching the attackers out. What if they don't bring that thermite? What if they don't bring a Thatcher or a Maverick or any sort of hard breach because they don't really need it on that specific site? I think go down because Thatcher's banned, isn't he? They banned Thatcher out, so they're going to bring a Maverick, but we'll just be ready for it. So this clip that's playing in the background, we did exactly that. On the third round or our first defensive round, we decided we we're going to go downstairs instead of up to the top floor, which would have been the stronger site. If you actually listen back to a lot of the kills that we secured, we took out an IQ, a Zofia, a Capital, a Nomad, and a Jackal. Now, they didn't have any hard breach at all. They had no Thatcher. I think the Thatcher was banned by them, actually. But they had no hard breach. They had no Maverick. And the reason for this is they didn't expect us to be there. They cannot attack from that side of the map. And it's a whole area we don't even need to be concerned with. We got them hook, line and sinker with this. And because of it, we had a very easy time winning this round. And that left us with a stronger site to fall back to. If you go for the weaker site and you win it, the next site you have to win on is the stronger site. And you're already in the attacker's minds. You're already... You know, you've got one up on them. And we all know that Siege is a pretty big mental game. The team that's riding high with a lot of confidence, yes, they can come off the rails a little bit, but nine times out of 10, if you get that sort of streak going, you're going to stand a better chance of winning future rounds because of that confidence. You're going into gunfights with, you know, a bit of bravado. So let's presume that you have managed to catch the attackers out uh, on the first round, or even if you don't and you have to fall back to the stronger site, you've still got to play that stronger site. Being unpredictable in Siege, if your enemy can't really read you and don't really understand the way you're playing, that's going to give you a massive chance to win games. Now, a perfect example of this is runouts. If you don't do runouts for the first two defensive rounds and then suddenly it happens, the attackers aren't going to be expecting it. By that point, they've stopped bringing Nomad because it's not coming and it's just not happening. And if you've not been peaking for the entire time, teams become a little bit complacent. They think, you know what? I, I've mastered this team. I know who I'm playing now. They're not spawn peeking. We'll have a quick cursory look on the way in towards the site, but it's not really happening. So I don't have to worry about it too much. And it's the same with runouts. If teams are playing on Windows quite a lot and you're not running out, they're going to become complacent in that. So being unpredictable and changing your play style mid game or maybe even mid round can have a massive impact on the outcome of that game. Other elements of unpredictability to consider are how you enter the map as an attacker. Do you have a favorite way? Do you have favorite ops that you like to pick on certain sites? I know I do. I am just as guilty of it as everyone else. There are certain sites in which I will almost always take a Jackal or a Zofia. I mean, Jackal's probably banned. So I nearly always play Thatcher on certain sites and certain maps. And that sort of becomes your go-to. And, and with that, 
not only does it become your go-to operator, but you also develop a bit of a pattern. Now, I'm willing to bet money that if I go on the basement of Consulate and I don't reinforce the teller's hatches coming down, there is a pretty high chance that an Ash player is going to drop through one of those hatches and try and rush the kitchen site downstairs it happens so frequently it's unbelievable and because of that i can just sit there and wait for it i literally if i don't reinforce the hatch will sit at the bottom of the red stairs i will wait for that explosion and as soon as it goes off i will start shooting in that direction and more often than not i will get the kill if a drone has been left there to sort of have a quick check on the attacker side that's even more of an advantage to you because you know that it's coming but that predictability is is a big killer out there it really is that sounds like i'm talking about some sort of terrible disease you know i need to do a an advert predictability is the single biggest killer amongst our community i would definitely advocate to try and mix things up though if you normally go in through a certain way yes there is probably a reason for that i'm not saying go through the the most dangerous ways where everyone's got a crossfire on you you know don't go in through the great big open lobbies is pretty dangerous and there's a reason you've been avoiding going that way but are there other ways into the map are there other ways into the site and if so could you potentially take them now i'm going to discuss consulate yet again and the reason for that is i think this entire game pretty much sums up a perfect example of of what to do for two rounds in a row on attack the defenders went upstairs and both of those times we attacked the console office from the windows from the balcony and from yellow stairs itself to try and get that control and exert that and on the second time, we actually came very, very close to losing the round. So the third time we were attacking and we realized the defenders had gone there yet again for some reason. I, I don't understand that mindset at all. We attacked it again and I said, you know what? Let's go through admin this time. The question is, do we change it up this time? Do we all push through like admin and get control of that? We have pushed that side twice. The defenders have probably rejigged all of their utility to try and counter our push. And they've tried to learn from the way we're playing and how we're doing it. But by going in through admin and pushing in that way through the top floor, sweeping across as a, a united sort of force, the defenders weren't really ready for it. They weren't set up for it. People were roaming downstairs in piano and the yellow stairs, ready to do runouts on us on the console windows. And they're all on the wrong side of the map. So that is really, really beneficial. Tying in with all of this is going to be Nock and Amaru. Nook, Nock, Nock, Nook. Nook, Nook I, you know what? knock we're gonna go with knock now at the minute amaru hasn't officially dropped on the live servers so it remains to be seen how she's going to be played but i'm willing to place a couple of bets here amaru is going to be weak as hell the first few weeks she's going to be rubbish and the reason she's going to be rubbish is everyone is going to be taking her everyone's going to be flying through the typical windows on chalet uh, through into the trophy room that you couldn't previously get into and that is really really strong but if everyone knows it's coming and everyone expects it it's really weak on the test server we've seen it already amaru is just getting destroyed the majority of times and the logic behind that is predictability if you know that the attackers are going to bring an amaru because she's brand new you plan for it you'll bring a frost you'll cover certain windows but what about not? Now, at this stage of the game, she's not really expected to be seen that much. We all know she's fairly weak in a majority of situations. She's not the best operator. But where does Nock excel? When you're not expecting to see her, when she sort of surprises you and comes out of nowhere, that's when she's at her strongest. So what if you don't know that they've got a Nock? What if it's the fourth round of a match? You haven't seen Nock played in like three games and suddenly she's got past all of your cameras and she's in the site. Both of these operators are going to rely on unpredictability. Um, just like a cav, just like a vigil, they really are going to need that unpredictability and the team to not expect it to happen. They're not strong in straight up gunfights. However, if you can catch people out and they're not expecting it, it's going to make all the difference. Now, I appreciate I haven't given that many specific examples in this. I've given a few rough examples. But this is more about your mindset than anything. This entire video is about thinking outside of the box and saying, you know what? I do this every single time and it's got a 50% chance of working. If it didn't work the first two rounds you did it, it's probably not going to work the third round. So try and think outside of the box. Try and be creative. The best players in Siege are creative. I personally feel, and this is going to get a lot of stick, I personally feel the reason that EU has got a slight edge over NA is because it's not all about gunning. NA has got some of the best gunners in the world. There is no doubt about it. They've got some serious, serious fraggers. But EU seems to work on strats a little bit more. Um, they seem more fluid in those strats and they seem more able to play around them. And I think that's what gives people the edge in Siege. I really do. The reason Macy J is as good as he is is because he can think outside of the box. He can think, you know what? I need to attack that guy. 
But instead of just going straight in and trying to outfrag him, why don't I go below, cook a grenade, and then take him out that way? And that is definitely what I am going to employ you to do. Please, please go ahead, try it, and I think you'll be surprised with the results. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it makes sense and you don't think it was a complete waste of time. This is something I feel quite strongly about, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting the thumbs up. And if you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.